I want to talk about the hidden costs of software engineering. And I'm really talking about hidden costs of personal projects and also hidden costs in life in general. So the hidden costs I want to talk about in personal projects really have to do with deployment and how you um, choose the services that you're going to use to build out whatever project you're, you, you're making. Uh, you're going to, you're probably have come across some advice or suggestions uh, by people telling you to use like uh, AWS's cloud services, Azure's uh, cloud services, and things like that. Um, you might find a suggestion to use a Lambda function. You might find a suggestion to deploy, um, let's say like on an EC2 instance in AWS, or you can use like an Azure Logic app or something like that, or use a database hosted in some kind of cloud service. But if you ever look at the cost of using those, um, you might you know you might be fine with the free tier but if you look at the cost of the tier once you meet that threshold you might be turned away with how expensive it really gets you can read story after story online of people you know you, you put your credit card in and they forget to turn something off and they forget that it's running or they got a lot of traffic unexpectedly and now they have a few thousand dollar bill that they have to pay because their cloud services we're running without them knowing and this isn't like an uncommon thing there's a reason why you have to put your card in there to sign up for these things past a certain you know point in time it's not because you know they're just trying to get your information it's because these things are really expensive to, to run right hosting environments are wildly expensive and if you ever use any of like databases serverless functions um, I'm trying to think what else, uh, especially any kind of like analytics or AI integrations, that stuff is really, really expensive. It might not be expensive if you're, you know, sending a hundred requests a day at it, it might be free, but if once you get to the thousands and tens of thousands of hits on your database, on your app or whatever, it's going to get really, really expensive. And you better make sure that you turn that off before you get too much traffic to your site. Because if it's just your project and you're already not making money with it, you don't want to pay accidental costs because of your cloud hosting that you didn't anticipate. So just make sure you calculate that out. And they give you charts, and the calculation charts admittedly are pretty complicated. If you've ever looked at them, they seem straightforward because some of them are like per second, some of them are per minute, some of them are per request, some of them, some of them are per like tens of requests. Some of them are per read and writes. Uh, it really depends what service it is. And you really need to make sure that you're looking at it correctly. Because once you pass that threshold, if you don't set up like an automatic stop, like, hey, don't, you know, kill this service if I exceed the threshold of the free tier. If you don't put that on or if you, if you make sure that, like, if you're not sure that the service has that, just find that out because you don't want to exceed that and then all of a sudden be paying a huge bill at the end of the month that you didn't know about that's the worst thing you can do especially if let's say something you made got really popular and all of a sudden you got all this traffic drive you know driving over to this service or app you made guess what you're gonna have a massive bill because you didn't you, that there's no cap right like it's gonna be you have to pay for that so just keep that in mind and if anyone says that it's not expensive, just make sure that the services you are using, make sure you understand the pricing model around them. Because some of those services are really, really cheap. Some of them are very, very expensive for very low tiers. A lot of database stuff can be like that. If you've ever used uh, Firebase, if you've ever used, um, uh, let's, I'm trying to think, like AWS, uh, more advanced like database migration stuff uh, anything like that gets expensive pretty pretty quick depending on the data you're working with so I guess it comes down to understanding your data understanding the services that you're choosing to make it uh, with and understanding how much traffic you're anticipating getting that month uh, so just make sure you've calculated that out and it doesn't matter if somebody says oh but you know you forgot about just Look at the calculation graph, make sure you're in the right tier, and just, just 
you want to find that out. That's a that's a big hidden cost. Next big, now the next hidden cost is in life, and I, I would say that for me, a side effect, admittedly maybe an unwanted side effect of programming, is sometimes looking at life through the lens of more of like a reductionist perspective. I mean, you kind of reduce everything down to its base terms. Uh, admittedly, this is a logical way to think because it kind of makes everything a little more binary, but sometimes looking at things that are a little more gray in nature and trying to force them into more of a binary outlook is kind of bad. Um, and I would say that for me, as I've kind of continued in the years of, of doing software, I think that's only progressed. I think that my reasoning and, and approach to life has become a little maybe too logical for what I've been hoping for. Um, this is a fight. It's just as a side effect of reading code, right? You're reading logic statements and operators and all these things. So sometimes it's easy to take that from your job and apply it to your everyday life. And I think that sometimes um, empathy can can escape because of that. Sympathy can escape because of that. And I think that sometimes uh, just having a, a general reasonableness about you can escape as well. Once you, if you're continuing, continually take this kind of reductionistic approach to life, uh, which sometimes is not good. And I'm not saying that approaching everything from a logical perspective is good or healthy. And I'm not saying that, um, I, I'm not saying that you shouldn't approach everything from logical and reasonable standpoint is what I meant to say but I think that you can take it too far and I think that if you take everything from the approach of it has to be reduced to its base terms and you have to analyze everything and you have to overthink everything and reduce everything down to a yes or no or you know if then type of thing it can be probably pretty detrimental in your life um, and for me I think I've seen that progress and I think that I've seen that affect my thinking about things. I think I've seen that affect my way I approach um, friendships as well. And I think it's generally maybe been a little negative. Um, I think it's helped me in terms of planning my personal life, meaning like, okay, if you take a logical approach to everything, you probably, you know, your, 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 your schedule is probably going to be intact. Your decision-making around... Uh, how you, you know, manage your money is probably going to be intact. Your your general routine of life is probably going to be, you know, succinct, you know. But your your maybe approach to relationships and friendships and maybe things that are gray in life might be a little lacking, maybe. I, I would say that one approach to escaping this is try to take or at least I've tried to take a little more creative approach in my programming. And I've tried to think a little more in abstract terms. And I've tried to introduce more like a poetic nature to programming. That's, that's makes me think outside the realm of, you know, ones and zeros. So art is helpful. Music is helpful. Um, and generally just reading things that you wouldn't normally read is helpful because it makes you think outside of your, you know, your, your general circle of, of, of influence, which is always good. It's always good to get an opposing or outside perspective. Um, when I approach my software projects, I would say predominantly I still take a logical approach for the most part because that, out of sheer necessity oftentimes. But I think that I'm trying to allow for more of creative discussion, whether that be internally amongst, with myself or externally with people I work with, um, just, just trying to figure out a way where we can blend a, a healthy balance of creativity and abstract thinking into a more logical and binary space. Uh, because I think blending both of those is really healthy because somebody who thinks who's very artistic is going to have a wildly different perspective 
than somebody who is just only does programming. It's just not because different people, but just different jobs, functions cause your brain to think in different ways out of necessity. So I think one hidden cost that you have to weigh when getting into programming is weigh the cost of how your outlook and approach to life may change due to the amount of thinking that you're going to do throughout the day and the amount of particular thinking you're going to do, especially early on in your career. Because generally, earlier on, you're going to be doing the most amount of programming. When you're a junior developer, mid-developer, you're going to be doing probably the most amount because you're going to be, again, generally, you're probably going to be in less meetings and you're probably going to be handling more uh, tickets, stories, you know, enhancements and things like that. As you kind of get later on down the road, you you kind of add in more meetings that's more geared towards like design, more meetings involving other people trying to generate discussion around around uh, system design or what needs to be done, what needs to be updated and things like that. So I think when you get as you progress, you're going to find a lot more opportunity to reintroduce that way of thinking back into your life and your professional life. But earlier on in that first stretch of however many years, it might affect you in ways you didn't think. So just be mindful of that going into it. Um, I would say for me, I would say for me it was a bit of a surprise. And honestly, I wish that there was some kind of podcast, or maybe there is, talking about this because I love... I find it helpful when as I'm working in, in programming to listen to long form videos and discussions and podcasts geared towards this area of software engineering just because it helps me think and that's partially why I make these long form is so that um they if somebody likes these they can they can just listen to them. Um but that's something that caught me by surprise was I wasn't expecting the change in my own personal thinking. Um, and I, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm still unsure about how I fully navigate that and fully combat reducing everything to base terms and making everything not abstract. And I'm trying to make things a little more abstract and not make them as logical if that makes sense um because if taken to the extreme it can lead to things that we talked about uh and I, I think that caught me off guard and i think first two years in my programming journey were the most challenging by far by far it, night and day difference the first two years was a big transition period for me because it was the first time that one, I was getting paid to do programming, so a lot was riding on my, you know, ability to make logical decisions and write logical code. Um, but two, there was just a lot of just, you know, stress both externally and just, you know, innately in myself to perform in a way where I felt like I was going to retain my job, but also advance in my job. So I think that it forces it forced me to fully throw myself into that world and fully adopt that way of logical thinking um, and admittedly it's it's beneficial to your career but being mindful of its effect in your personal well-being and in personal thinking and um this personal life is is something that shouldn't be forgotten. And I don't know what kind of discussion this would be if it was a discussion outside of like YouTube, but just making sure that you keep a tally on your own personal uh, state of being, personal health, because that's, that's the utmost importance, right? You need to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Um, and if that means that you have to figure out a new way to think about programming 
that's not 100% logical, maybe that's what you have to do. And maybe it's reading books that you didn't think of. Maybe it's listening to discussions that you maybe didn't think you were interested in. I think it's all helpful because it forces you to think about problems in a different way. So anyway, that's all I want to talk about. I think there is more hidden costs that you could you could talk about, but um, that's all I have for now. So I'll see you in the next one.